Hello, Vanguard community. Today is Friday, May the 15th. I'm Jennifer Methvin, the Chancellor at Arkansas State University, BB. This is Doing Things Differently and Learning Something New. Have with me today is my guest, Frank N. Taylor II. Frank, let's tell folks a little bit about yourself. Uh, simply, my name is Frank N. Taylor II, uh, raised in the great city of Shreveport, Louisiana. Um, I am the student union night manager here love working here student life is my life and we're here to transform lives through quality learning experiences absolutely yeah uh, and and your uh, your title doesn't quite describe everything that is involved in being there in the student life office and and in the student center um uh, particularly in, in the evenings and so um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit of that uh, more about that as we go along well I think by now everybody kind of knows the drill we're just having some conversations to chat to capture um, how the public uh, health crisis has impacted us as an institution how it's impacting our students and the way that we do our work the idea is about five questions about 15 minutes long um, and we'll just jump right in um, Frank if you're ready I'm ready so you will recall, though it seems like quite some time ago, that we moved to remote um, work March the 20th, and students had moved to remote instruction a week before that. You're there in the student center watching our students, some of whom remained in the dorm and had to come over for meals and all those sorts of things. Um, you, you've watched students come in and out to the advising and learning centers to go upstairs to access computers. Uh, what's been the most challenging part, both for you and do you think for students of this working remotely since it started? One of the things that I think a lot of things that students are kind of going through is the whole thing of not being able to congregate. Uh, you know, we are a social community and, you know, students have their, their particular little social group. So, you know, not being able to, you know, hang with your friends and stuff. For me, it, it's, it's been very, because in this office, as you alluded to that, you know, my title doesn't really, you know, we work with the, the student leaders. We work with the student government. I work with intramurals. I work with the different clubs and organizations. So, seeing just a select few of students here on campus is, is really kind of hard, you know, because you, you really wanted to see, you know, not to sound like a commercial, but that's the job that we do. We see them come in when they first start here and we're, our job is to get them to their goal, which is graduation, which is completion upon that degree. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so um, why don't you share a little bit about a few of the things that we've done so that the students who are still on campus, because I think we had about 40, um, were able to have a little social interaction without <laughs> congregating, because you're right, that's been a challenge. It, it has, um, uh, here, uh, with, with the help of, of, of my direct supervisor, Zach Tucker, we've, we've done things, we've, we've, done escape rooms. Uh, one day I actually created a small mini golf course. Uh, just different little things that, that we can do so they can get out and, and, and be, you know, not just cooped up because, you know, this, this pandemic is, is really, it's really been crucial to a lot of people, but we also do provide meal service. Now we do not serve breakfast, but we do lunch and dinner. And that's all seven days of the week. So they have two opportunities to come get a meal and, uh, and even our faculty and staff who were here on campus, uh, let's just say uh, I put on some pandemic weights because <laughs> I was partaking of those two meals myself. <laughs> I, I probably did too, because I did try at least two or three times a week to come over um, and be in the line six feet apart with the students and kind of exactly. exactly. do a check in, you know, and see how, how they were doing. And we could do that with those who were here on campus, uh, many of whom, uh, were working or maybe didn't have internet access at home or didn't have um, being here was a safer place for them to be than, than where they were from and so um, I know it's been particularly challenging um, for that set of students. Well Frank do you think we're learning anything through this process that's going to make us better, better service of students, better in student life? Um, what, what are we learning? One of the things I think we're, we're learning, we're learning to be creative within our own minds of things to, I mean, yeah, we, we've got to be, you know, 
you always hear that phrase, thinking outside of the box. Well, I like to say we're thinking outside of COVID. So <laughs> yeah. we're trying to do every little thing, you know, the, the going to the online, um, things of that nature. And another thing that I believe, and I'm, I'm hoping that we're all learning this, is to learn to listen. Because one of the things that we've done over here is we, wanna, we want the students to give us the feedback, like, how can we help you? How can we better serve you? So listening is a very key component that I think we can use as an institution to ask the questions, listen to the feedback, and if it's something that we can do, implement those plans into our day-to-day -day jobs to make everything better for our students. Yeah, yeah, I think you're well aware. We've had a couple of uh, student senate cabinet meetings where we've just, that's been one of the agenda items where it said, tell us what we can do better, tell us what you need. Um, and we tried to do that along. Um, um, because students, uh, that I, I said at graduation, students were teaching us as much as we were teaching them. Exactly. Summer. Exactly. Um, and I think I think those things will make us better. Well, what about you personally? What has been most challenging for you personally, aside from ASUBB? Well, for one thing, and most of you do know, I do have another job outside of this one that I work. Um, and I just want to say that I'm blessed because with a lot of people who are being furloughed and laid off, I, both jobs that I have, I have been able to continue to work. So one of the things that has been hard for me, like everyone, not being able to see family, but let me just say, these masks are uncomfortable. Now, big shout out to VRG Manufacturing, where I got this, but uh, man, these things, and, and this one's pretty, my grandson loves it because it's got, you know, crayons on it, but uh, these things are uncomfortable. Um, but you know what? There are times when something that is uncomfortable, which is for your safety, you got to learn to deal with it. My father always taught me, you know, hey, you know, you got to learn to roll with the punches. You got to learn to adjust to your surroundings, adjust to what's going on. So, hey, I may not truly enjoy wearing the mask or the constant, you know, but look, I'm trying to live. I got two princesses that I call my daughters that I live for and my grandson. So, they need me and trust me i need them i need asubb as much as asubb needs me so look you know stop the complaining put your mask on and let's be safe <laughs> good good i love it i love it um yeah the uncomfortableness of the mask i have to agree with that um yeah and not and not seeing our family and friends all right well it's only fair i get to ask four questions so i'll allow my guests to ask one um as well so i'm ready for your question okay so <laughs> To me, in these trying times of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, you know, I think it's important that we all have our own release. Um, and I would like to ask of you, Dr. Mesner, what is your release? You know, what do you do? And what advice do you have to our campus community to get something for them to keep their lives in balance? I know for me, uh, being someone who's a huge sports fan, you know, with nothing on ESPN, I, I've gone back because I'm a big music lover. So uh, I'm, I'm, you know, digging deep into to my music collection, listening to new stuff. But also, and I will be totally honest, I've become a net fan of Netflix and Disney Plus, and I am watching a lot of Star Wars content right now. <laughs> Well, Star Wars landed in our lives during this in my household as well, because normally you're exactly right. Normally my husband and I would be in the middle of working, you know, our way um, from March Madness um, through the NBA championship. That's what we would be. Um, Me doing. too. Me too. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm still having March Madness bracket <laughs> withdrawal. <laughs> yeah. So that's what we would be doing. We're big basketball fans. Um, we, ha we are blessed to have a home um, with a very large and, and nicely fenced backyard. And I'm a, I'm a gardener. Um, and so uh, we, we've built a couple of additional um, uh, beds to garden out of this year. So uh, I now have a place to plant sunflowers. Um, and I had some seed that was about three years old from the last batch of sunflowers that I grew in a jar, had made the move, you know, back to Arkansas with us. And I thought, ah, these aren't going to grow, but let's, let's put them in the ground and see, because I take a lot of pride in that having seed that once I bought seed, I'll never have to buy seed again because I'll harvest seed. 
you know. Um, and so um, th those sunflowers popped up. <laughs> and awesome. so, yeah, so we, we built a few beds in the backyard and have planted flowers and, and uh, our normal garden things, tomatoes and those sorts of things. That has taken some time because that's kind of work. Um, <laughs> but, but you're exactly right. It, it's been very easy. Um, People probably think working remotely means you have a lot of free time. It actually ends up meaning you kind of work 24 seven. Exactly. Um, and there have been, you know, we sort of been in constant crisis because of the changing conditions, um, constant crisis. And so my team here at Work and I, we've had to meet daily and um, sometimes, not sometimes, a lot of times on Saturday and Sunday to make decisions. I think we're up to 17 maybe updates that we've put out to students in the public about how we're handling things. And um, so it has been very, very stressful. Uh, so that backyard has helped. And another thing, quite honestly, I like doing that backyard is sit on my wonderful porch and read. I'm a reader. I've mentioned that before um, on this, um, on this uh, series. I'm a reader and so I'm reading um, I have a little bit more time to read and I have to make myself stop and read. Um, that gives me a little calmness um, and a little peace. Uh, you know, several people that I've interviewed have talked about that. It's, re it's really hard to find um, ways for you to shut down your mind and step away for a little bit, but how important it is. It is absolutely um, important that we do that. So a little gardening, a little reading, um, a uh, little granddaughter who um, is just beautiful on FaceTime and is exceptionally entertaining. And I'm, I'm blessed. My son and daughter-in-law take lots of videos for me. And so, <laughs> so, and those things are important. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, so yeah. what about you? I'm going to turn it back on you. What are you uh, doing with that basketball? Netflix? Yeah. Like I said, uh, I'm, I'm a, I'm a uh, most people know that I'm a huge hip hop fan. Uh, so you, between YouTube and, and just the, vast cd collection that i have i've just kind of gone back into a lot of that um also you know the my family structure we, we're, we're very religious and i'm someone who you know you always hear people say pray for me you know I, that, that is something i've actually done a whole lot more of and needed so so um just kind of digging back in, into my spirituality you know getting that connection again but I can say I am blessed to still be working. So, you know, I am usually at work. Um, big shout out to ESPN for bringing uh, the last dance documentary on a little bit earlier. Cause hey, that's, that is, that is feeding my basketball addiction right now. <laughs> yes. Yeah, um, you know, even though I, I'm a huge Michael Jordan fan, Dr. J was the first. Okay, <laughs> everybody re recognize, Don't realize, and understand that <laughs> Dr. J was the man before Mike was in the air. You're early. <laughs> but um, yeah. So, I, and I, I do watch a lot of TV. Uh, Big Bang Theory. You know, you know, I, I'm a big fan of, of 30 minute sitcoms. Um, I've got a box set of Three's Company. I'm almost all the way through it. <laughs> I think Three's Company is on Antenna TV right now too. So there you go. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. So just just a lot of TV, um, and and I'm about to start because most people know you know being a bachelor, uh, and I'm not the greatest of cooks, and uh, you know now that that the meal service is no longer provided, you know. <laughs> I gotta stop going through drive through So I'm I'm trying to teach myself how to cook, you know, meals for myself. So that's my next my next hobby. Okay, that's awesome. That's awesome. So that kind of leads to to um, the question I usually close with. What's the silver lining in all of this? You know, I, I labeled this series doing things differently, learning something new. Um, so we've got to take some silver linings away from this and whether it's for you or our students or the institution or our state or our nation, what's the silver lining? For me, a silver lining that, that I've personally learned is the strength that a lot of us have, not just um, on our campus community, our, our township community, you know, the state level, you know, and across the country. And I would hope that we would all learn to build on this strength. I've also been someone, Dr. Mendel, I've been a person who, who did not really, I don't want to say didn't believe, but just always felt that mental health was, was, was something that, you know, hey, you know, that's just for a few people. But it affects quite a bit 
of people. And shout out to uh, Jennifer Downey Rutledge, A Chambers, our, our counselors on staff who are still doing counseling and not a shameless plug, but this is Mental Health Awareness Month. And I really think that, you know, we should kind of shed a light on that because in this time, you know, when you have totally changed your daily routine, that can kind of mess with your psyche. And we need to learn that, hey, people who go to school to, to get this degree to be counselors, they're here to help you. And, and going through something that is, that is a total upheaval of, of your regular daily lives, um, I, I think that's one of the great things that, we, that I've learned coming out of this. Um, and I hope our campus community will learn to, to utilize these resources. But I, I really think the strength of people just, just being able to like, you know what? Hey, this has happened. Let's, let's, let's band together, band together, do what we got to do to fight this, you know, stop all the arguing, all the, you know, the combativeness, because let me tell you something, you know, uh, and this is just a little, you know, a lot of people, when, you know, when you say peace, you know, you hold up two fingers, but you know what? Peace should come together as one. So, hey, as one, we're going to get there, not divided. Yeah. Couldn't hey, agree. that's my little sermon for the day. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. This is not, not the time. Um, our, our differences can't separate us at this time. Um, exactly. Together, we have a whole lot of strength. That's, that's, that's a great, great silver lining. And I've heard that a lot. Um, well, Frank, I want to thank you for all that you do for our students. Um, you are um, a very strong, my pleasure. <laughs> you're a very <laughs> strong mentor to many of our students, um, and, and they look they look to come in that door and see you there and and talk with you. And and I never walk into the student center that you're not in action, well, well, except on Mondays. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Except on Mondays, but that's our running joke around here. Frank's not here on Mondays. He has that other job, I guess. Um, so we miss Frank on Mondays. But I appreciate all that you do and all that Student Life has done um, to help our students because while we've had to do so much remotely, um, you all have had about 40 students there consistently to also take care of, and I appreciate that uh, very much. And I have enjoyed our conversation. I enjoyed, uh, I enjoyed your lip sync video that contributed to our employee appreciation. Um, <laughs> um, it was very well done. Enjoyed that um, a great deal. And I appreciate everybody who's following this series and, and joining us and, and uh, learning something new. We are at this time in the midst of figuring out how not only can we serve students this summer, but what the fall semester will look like. So we're going to continue the series even though the spring 2020 semester is over uh, because this public health crisis is not over. And so we continue to make decisions. Um, fall will probably not be the, the normal fall semester either. And so I think yeah. we still have a great deal to talk about and learn about. And so for my next episode, I'm going to gather some of those students that I have been talking with who've been advising me as we go through this about how things were going and let them do a little ref reflection and share that um, with you all about how um, their experience um, through this semester has been. So we appreciate you joining us. I'll see you next time. Thank you, Frank. No problem. Appreciate it.